Oh my gosh, you guys, I have something very exciting and potentially momentous to show you today. This is Legolas, our Legolas lizard. We've had her for about seven years. She's one of our ambassador Legolas lizards. She does live in the zoo though with others. I say she, even though you can't visibly sex this species, so I'm really just guessing. I just, she looks like a girl, I guess, to me. I don't know why. A fun fact about this species is they have this lateral line that runs down their side that as you can see, it expands and contracts as they breathe, but when you move down her body. The second reason why they have this lateral line is because it expands and gives them essentially storage space. Look, it's completely expanded down here, guys. And this is her cloaca area. I think she's gravid. I think she's got eggs in her, which would be insane because nobody breed. This is such a difficult, these don't breed in captivity, guys. So if she were gravid, if she laid eggs, we would be, as far as I'm aware, only the third entity in existence, the third person ever to breed this species in captivity anywhere in the world. The first place is, again, as far as I'm aware, to breed the legless lizard was the San Diego Zoo just a few years ago. And then someone down south whose name I can't remember right now, I just kind of ran in and started filming. He also bred them, but he sadly passed away. So nobody's able to ask for, you know, his tips and tricks and how he did it. But if she breeds for us, if we manage to breed legless lizard, look at that, look at that pudge. She is so pudgy right here. That lateral line is expanded to the max. If she lays eggs and we breed them, I, I don't even know. My mind would explode if she even just laid eggs. So we're going to see what happens. We separated her from the zoo. We gave her a lay box over here and we will see if she is in fact gravid. We're just going to give her some time where it's calm back here. I'm nervous but excited and we'll see what happens. She'd be looking thick. I know, right? She's so yeah. thick. Ed hasn't seen her yet. Look at this. This, okay. I, I walked up and I was, like, I was like, but there's nothing here. Well, duh. Oh, yeah, that's her tail. <laughs> they don't hold eggs in their tail. <laughs> Hi, little girl. Look, look at that. Oh, Isn't goodness. she? She's huge. You are so big. I know. I think. You can't, like, palpate them, though. No, they've got too thick of scales. But I think she's gravid. She's either gravid or she's got to poop. One of the two. couple of days and we haven't seen anything yet but we're gonna take a look together here she's been spending a lot of time in her nest box which i think is a good sign so let's see come on legolas are you in your nest box still oh oh you put are oh, we put those oh yeah i weighed the yeah i weighed down the lid with the rocks hi do you have any eggs in here are you laying anything or are you just fat oh i do not see anything in there okay but oh my gosh never mind there's one right here oh my gosh there's two she has two eggs oh my gosh look at these why did you lay them over here she was in the nest box last night and she's in it right now and the eggs are out here in the aspen i don't understand what she's doing but guys we have some of the first ever captive board bread whatever legless lizards holy cow okay so this egg definitely looks sluggy yeah. i don't know what you think do you yeah, think that's definitely a slug, definitely a slug. okay but, but this that one, one looks good. yeah this one actually looks like it could be a good egg it's white i mean i've never seen a legless lizard egg before i don't know if anybody ever has but uh, i think i would assume you could candle it just like anything else so let's see see any red i don't know maybe not but it's it's white so yeah. we're gonna we're gonna have high hopes and it looks different than that sluggy egg so i'm gonna hope that this is a good egg we will see do you have any more in you why are you in the lay box but laying these outside also this is a huge egg yeah it is for the size of lizard that she is oh my gosh okay like a loss hi hi do you are you still fat are you oh, oh yeah oh there's an egg yeah. right there oh definitely an egg right there yeah. i think okay so we're gonna leave her alone we'll let her do her thing please be another good egg let's hope it is i wonder how many eggs they typically have in a clutch I, I mean, nobody. Know many people know. Nobody knows. That's how do we incubate this thing? What I, temperature do we put it at? I'd do say we? Eighty degrees and just monitor. Just like a low temperature, yep. a nice safe. I mean, they're from Europe. Okay, well, th that's what we have to do next. Is I, I think it's safe to say this is a bad egg. But do we yeah. keep it for science? Oh, I just pitch it. You just throw it away. Yeah. yeah, we don't need this. Okay, but we'll keep this good egg. Oh my 
my gosh. All right, what we have to do is run to the snake house and get this set up for incubation. Okay, as you can see, we are now at the snake house and I added a little line on top to like indicate the top side during yep. transit, just to be extra safe with the singular egg, even though I think there's at least one more in her. Yeah. So I think we have another on the way. I hope it's fertile. I don't know if it's gonna be, but we wanted to come here straight away to get this set up in incubation. So I'm gonna set you there. The problem is, how, how do we incubate this? I mean, oh, we incubate everything in perlite, so I assume that should be I okay think for it. Fine, yeah. The thing is, is these have only ever been bred two other times in existence, and I had, don't have a chance to reach out to the San Diego Zoo, and the other person who bred them passed away, unfortunately. So we're kind of on our own right now, but we're gonna, I guess, do oop, perlite. They're a European species, so do you think I have to go lighter on the water? Or should I just do my average I mixture? I would do an average mixture. Okay. It seems to work. Gosh, this is crazy like this lizard yeah, eggs. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I okay. Mean, crazy if it hatches. Yeah, it might not hatch, so I'm not getting too excited yet because I don't want to get my hopes way too high. But I am we excited. Got an egg. But we got an egg. Yes, we got eggs. The That's a huge step. I don't know if anyone else has even gotten eggs, let alone babies. So we're gonna set this up, hope for the best. We're gonna put it right in here. There we go, perfect. And do we just leave the line? you think? Should we just leave yeah, that alone? We, we could just do a line for this one. Yeah. Or if you wanted to draw the thing we were talking about. We were thinking about doing like jewels because yeah. this is such a rare type of egg. Draw so, like a diamond around it really quick. A diamond? Okay. Yeah. I will turn this into, let's see, a di oh wait, I did the shape the diamond. I guess that's, uh, I, I guess I should have done the jewel the diamond, not the shape oh, a diamond. Oh, yeah, that works. I, yeah. guess I thought it was a diamond. I thought like that was the top and that's the bottom. Oh, uh, perfect. However you yeah. see it, yeah. that is a diamond. Okay, I'm just doing minimal drawing on this. I know marker doesn't affect snake eggs, but yeah. I assume it wouldn't affect legless lizards, but I'll just keep it minimal to be safe. Yeah. So this is <laughs> crazy to write this. Legless lizard, that's crazy. Okay, laid on 6-8, my sister Grace's birthday actually. And I would write when it's due, but we don't know. We don't know when it's due. Nobody yeah. knows anything about breeding legless lizards. Cause again, it's never really been done. So we're just gonna keep an eye on it. I would assume since it's a lizard, it's probably gonna take longer than snake eggs. If it does in fact make it, I mean, fingers are crossed, it doesn't go bad. But if it were to go through and make it through incubation, I would assume three months ish, somewhere yeah, around there. Nervous. I don't know though. We have, we have no idea. Well, we'll I guess just, we'll put it in. Yeah, we'll just put it in at 80 degrees and... Uh, yeah, that's a safe temperature for a lot of species. So we'll just pop it in here, see what happens. I'll place it down there. And, oh my gosh. Our first Sheltapusic egg. Okay, so now our plan is to just wait it out, see if Legolas has any more eggs to lay. And after she is done and empty and good to go, then we will actually share how we think we may have triggered this breeding response or this breeding behavior for the first time ever at Snake Discovery and the third time ever that in know. history that we know of. Yes, this is still crazy. Oh my gosh. All right, fingers are crossed. Tomorrow we get another egg. All right, it has been a few days and we have Legolas here. And good news, she got the last egg out. Bad news, it was another slug. So she laid three slugs total and one good egg, which we are gonna check on next. Well, unfortunately, the egg went bad. It turned kind of like a yellow color and it started getting sweaty and then kind of went solid like a potato almost. I totally spaced it and just threw it out when I was doing egg maintenance on everybody else. And I forgot we were filming, which is why I tossed it. But yeah, it didn't make it. Well, at least we can go talk about how we got the eggs. Oh yeah, that's true. So we're kind of bummed that we're not going to get baby legless lizards this year, but we still got eggs, which is a huge step in the right direction for the captive breeding of this species. So we're still thrilled. And now what we're gonna do is explain how we think we were able to cycle them and get eggs in the first place so that anybody watching who's trying to breed Sheltapusic at least has one data point of someone who got reference. eggs. A, a reference. Yeah, exactly. Because not really anything is known about breeding these guys. Anyway, let's start by how I'm pretty sure you can sex legless lizards. To sex legless lizards, we have a female, Legolas, the mom. She laid eggs, so we know for sure she's a female. And I've yep. always had a hunch the entire time we've had her. And this is a male. He is proven male because when he has pooped, we have seen hemipenes come out or express, so we know he is a male. And now that we have confirmed she is a female, we're going to do some side-by-side -side comparisons to hopefully 
actually help you sex your legless lizard at home. I mean, now, first thing you can see right off the bat is she is daintier than he is. Even like whole body style, he's just beefier all the way around. Oh yeah, that seems like the males are larger, more robust. I mean, we'll get into this later, but they, I believe, have to be more robust because they appear to be a combative species. But in addition to that, you might notice that the male is a darker color. That kind of plays a role in it, but it isn't guaranteed. I've seen some females that are that darker color as well, but their head color does seem to be an indicator. The females do seem to have a lighter colored head in our experience than the males. And on top of that, the females, like Ed said, have more of a dainty look to their face. They have a shorter nose, a pointier nose. They kind of have a smaller head overall. And males have a larger, kind of blockier head. They have a more rounded nose. And they also seem to have kind of a heavy eyebrow above their eye. It makes them always look angry. Y yeah, it really does. So those are the comparisons we've noticed when it comes to sexing Sheltapusic. I'm not confident enough to say that is it's 100% guaranteed way to sex them. Our sample size is six. Our so. sample size is six. So, I mean, we were able to prove it out with her, I guess. Uh, but those are just our observations with Shelter Pusics in general. So now that we've covered how to best sex them, we're going to explain how we were able to cycle them and get eggs. All right, so we have a group of two males, two females, we're pretty sure, in this enclosure in the zoo. The enclosure itself is about six feet long, three feet deep, and about three feet high. So it gives them lots of space to explore in their terrestrial species so we went with more of a horizontally oriented enclosure than a vertical one because they can't climb. In addition we set up the enclosure to be more of like a grassland kind of dry prairie type setup like what they live in in the wild to keep it as naturalistic as possible and I mean being legless lizards these came from the wild unfortunately pretty much all Sheltapusics are wild caught because they're not bred in captivity which is why we're trying to breed them but we wanted to replicate their natural environment as best as we could. So we have the group together because we've found this species to be a communal species they seem to do very well in groups instead of just kept solo. They are fed an omnivore type diet. We use a grain free, high quality dog food mixed with uh, vegetables like root vegetables and greens. And we also throw in like pinky parts or uh, chicken hearts, really whatever meat we can. And they eat just about everything. They love eggs too, in particular. But again, we just tried to create a very diet, a very natural type setup for them. Now, as far as temperatures go, I think that's what caused the eggs to happen. In addition to being kept in this type of environment in the first place. Their temperatures during the daytime get to about 85 to maybe 90 degrees for their basking spot. And when the lights go off at night, it dips down to room temperature of around 70 to 75 in here. But that's only during the summer months. This entire wall of enclosures is actually set on an external wall of the building. So they all dip down in temperature during those cold winter months here in Minnesota. And that actually works to our benefit. It seems to cycle our Madagascar giant hognose snakes, our blue beauties, our false water cobras, it sinks them all up in the spring when the temperatures rise up again, it causes them all to want to breed. And now we are finally starting to see it with the legless lizards. So the temperatures in the winter, even though we also supplement with an extra lamp so it doesn't get too cold, they still dip down to about during the daytime, 80 to 85. And at night when the lights go off, it dips down to 60 to 65 in their enclosure, sometimes even in the upper 50s. So I believe that's what got these guys in a breeding cycle because they've just been in here long enough with those temperatures going up and down with the seasons and this past spring we noticed for the first time some fighting behavior aggressive behavior between some of the legless lizards the ones that we presumed were males it seemed like one of the males was picking on the other to the point where we had to pull it out and we ended up having to do that again we had three males in here originally one was lieutenant dan as that you all know and love we thought lieutenant dan was the one fighting with everybody and he has always caused troubles he was always a spitfire so we found a new home for lieutenant dan and i wish we hadn't i wish we could get him back if the person who adopted him changes their mind we would love to take him back because if we think it was a mistake we believe the males have to combat in order to breed with the females so we still have two males in here so i think it's okay but i would like to add more because that fighting that aggressive behavior i believe is the breeding behavior that you're actually looking for with shelter because also the first time this year 
we got eggs. So yeah, that's, I think it was a temperature dip in the winter that caused it along with them being kept together in a big natural enclosure. Yeah, I, and then I guess it's just a little bit of luck mixed in there too. But yeah, I think that covers, I mean, we also have UVB in there. We also coat their food with calcium and multivitamin, you know, the normal stuff. As far as weird things that we do that maybe made them want to breed, I think that covers everything. Uh, so yeah, we are still very excited that we got eggs, shelter music eggs, even though we're not going to be able to hatch them this year. That's just a future goal of ours. And we are one step closer to getting baby legless lizards born and bred in captivity. We're so close. We're going to crack the code one of these days. I think we did crack the code with the males being combative, uh, but we just have to get those eggs. There's, there's one that went through that jolly bear. Aw, see, that's why we have it in there. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's not a naturalistic addition to their no, enclosure. Yeah. They don't have the, the holy rollers in the wild, but that's okay. They like them anyway. Enrichment, yeah. right? So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you're as excited as we are and realize why we are as excited as we are about these eggs, even though they're not going to hatch this year. Really? Upside down? You're just showing off your tricks now? It's just like, I can do barrel rolls. Yeah. Can do, you do barrel rolls? I can't do barrel rolls. <laughs> I, I guess I you've got that on me, dude. Thank you, Patreon backers, for your amazing support and thank you everybody for watching and better luck next year right guys yeah you can do it you can still do it next year you can I do it in you.